Hello and welcome. Today we will be talking about sheet metal, but we're going to talk about everything you need to know to make any part in sheet metal. Okay, so today is going to be a long one, so grab yourself a cup of tea or some coffee and let's start. Go ahead, grab that coffee. I'll wait. So without further ado, let's let's head over to um, Alibre. Now, in order to make a sheet metal part, you need to start a new and an, an entirely different uh, type of part, which is the sheet metal part. There is a caveat to that. There is another way potentially, but we will discuss that later. So we open up a sheet metal part and we are uh, greeted by this new uh, ribbon, right? These new sets of tools which are specific to the sheet metal environment. And the first thing we need to do is set our sheet metal parameters. Okay. Now, okay, so as you can clearly see, the, the file is in inches and this is a one millimeter uh, thick stock in inches. Let's say we have a 16 gauge, which is 0 0.063, right? I think that's that's the 16 gauge. Okay, uh, and um, we have a key factor of uh, 0.33. Now, the key factor uh, is a value that describes the elongation as you're bending something. Um, and for a bend radius of around of half to one times the thickness, that's okay, right? That's relatively okay, right? Okay, so, and let's go for round global bend reliefs and let's hit okay. Uh, so we're good to go. Now, uh, with sheet metal parts, first you start your sheet metal part and then you go on adding things to it, right? So you can think of the sheet metal tools are uh, separated in two distinct categories. Uh, this is the first one, right? It's even called base features, right? And this is the second one, which is all the tools you need to do, you need to use to create your sheet metal part. Now, these tools are meant to be used once, okay? Only once. There is an exception to this, which is the tab tool. We will see that later, but Again, um, there are other ways to achieve what you can achieve by adding a second tab, right? So even this, I prefer to use it only once per file. After you use one of these and you have created your initial um, file, then you go on using these tools to finalize it and get the final 3D shape you're after. So um, let's uh, start with a couple of examples straight away. And um, let's start with a sec uh, center rectangle, right? And I will make that center rectangle. I'm going to make it, yeah, sure, four inches this way. And by the way, I've got uh, dual units going. Uh, it helps me visually. And let's say that we want to do 3.75, 2.75 this way, right? Okay, and I need to do this to fully define it. So I have made this rectangle, right? Four inches by 2.75. I deactivate my sketch. I exit my sketch. I hit tab and it, it's not asking me for anything else. Right? All it needs to know is the sketch. Uh, why is that? Well, the tab tool creates uh, a flat piece of stock, right? Cut to the outline of your sketch. Uh, so you do need a closed loop sketch to use this. Uh, you can think of it as the uh, analogous to the extrude command, right? In the normal modeling environment. Uh, 
And uh, of course, this is fully parametric. Everything we do in sheet metal is fully parametric. So if I go in and plunk <laughs> a circle here, let's let's be a bit one inch. One inch is fine. Right? You see that this updated, of course, everything is still parametric, right? But it still works with closed loop sketches. Um, okay, so uh, if we click here, we can see that the length here is 4 inches, the length here is 2.75. Everything is well. Now, after you've made your tab, first of all, let's, let's uh, see that the other tools here are grayed out. So it's like you use your uh, base feature once you're done. Uh, let, let's forget about these things and let's move on, right? So now, what you do then, right, is typically is you add flanges, okay? So let's start adding flanges. And this way we have made a box. And uh, there are a couple of things we need to discuss uh, here, because as you can see, there are many, many different options in the flange menu. And uh, realistically, this is the menu you will be using more than anything else um, in the sheet metal environment. First tool, first option that we want to use is the alignment option. Right now, you see that it is set to adjacent. And uh, we have leg one inch, uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, this is the height, right? Okay, let's put it back to one inch. We will discuss this later, but uh, okay. So we have alignment adjacent, okay? If I hit apply, remember that our initial sketch was four inches by 2.75, so let's, Take a measurement between these two faces, 4.189, right? It's a weird number. It doesn't even make real sense. So what happened there? Well, that's all to do. Oops, sorry for that. So that's all to do with this alignment option, right? So we're at the rightmost option, which is adjacent. Let's go to the first one, which is inside. Okay, let's hit OK. Let's take that measurement again. Four inches on the spot, right? So by hitting the inside option in alignment, you get a part basically that's the same uh, length and width as your initial tab. But what's going on there? Uh, well, let's see. First of all, you will see that there is some weird weirdness going on here. Right. We will discuss this later. So if we go back and hit adjacent, you will see that these are all pushed out. Okay. Inside they're pushed in. And there's the middle ground, which is called outside. So when you select inside, the tab, the flange, I'm sorry, the flange ends uh, on the inside of that edge you selected to create it. All right. When you uh, select outside, the inner face of this flange ends on the edge you selected to create it. And to that point, now if we measure the inside, we get a clean four inches, right? So now this box that we've created, the inner dimensions are the dimensions of our tab, right? Whose edges we selected to create this. Okay. And uh, when we select adjacent, what happens is even the bend radius uh, starts outside the edge, right? So the entire flange along with the bend radius is adjacent to that edge. And uh, you can clearly see that there are tremendous differences to the part you're going to get based on these options, okay? Um, and that leads me to a point that you need to think about. 
whenever you're using the sheet metal environment, okay? So the sheet metal environment is between the CAD and CAM universes, right? It is a bit computer-aided manufacturing and manufacturability of the part you're designing comes into play very significantly in the sheet metal environment. Now, Alibre will allow you to create parts that are not manufacturable and it will allow you to come in later and uh, correct them, but up to an extent, right? But look, uh, it seems a bit weird, doesn't it? I mean, this is a paper thin cut that you need to make to fold this. So let's see, what does that do? Okay, well, it trims the side bends. Okay, so what it does is it creates a small relief here um, so that these uh, flanges can be bent, right? And uh, they can be cut reliably uh, to an extent, of course. Um, so they, they are folded because if, if we uncheck this, you will see that we need to make a cut here that is, you know, basically zero thickness. And that's impossible, right? So we hit OK. We've left it at the inside um, option there. So four inches is our outer diameters now. OK. And uh, let's hit this flat pattern. OK. So basically, your goal um, when creating a sheet metal part is to arrive at a flat pattern, okay? To arrive at a shape, a 2D shape that can be cut from the stock and then bent um, in the correct places and with the correct radii and for the correct um, degrees so that to create the initial 3D geometry you started with. So that is what the flat pattern is. And this is also, to an extent, this is a tool for verification as well, because if you click on this and it doesn't unfold, it means that you've made a mistake. <clears throat> it means your part cannot be created uh, with sheet metal fabrication techniques, right? Okay, now, and we've talked about that as well. Okay, now let's uh, delete that. Right, let's make a, a new flange. Let's use these two edges now. We've we've we have uh, the same options. We've we've left it with the same options, right? Have our trim bend here. Okay. And uh, let's go and measure the height. Okay. So we have an, uh, a height of one inch here. Okay. Let's measure from here. Ah, to this top surface and sure enough this is not one inch this is 1.063 inches okay okay so what's going on here well with uh, uh, in our leg parameters right which controls the height of the flange we have selected the inside option uh, again you have mostly the same nomenclature here, right? So this is the inside option. And as the thumbnail shows on the icon, this one inch is measured from the inside of the flange, right? So it basically measures it from this surface. And sure enough, if I measure from here up to here, here's our one inch. Again, these are very, very important stuff because you can make bad parts if you're not paying attention when you're, uh, if you're not paying attention to these options when you're creating your flanges, right? Um, now, if we want our box to be an overall height of one inch, we should select the outside option for the leg, okay? Now, it's measuring it from the outside of the a flange and we click here and there's our one inch and finally we have this final option which says tab right so what it says is that the tab will be one inch now 
this edge, so after the 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 bend ends and up to the edge of our flange, that's where we get the one inch. Right? Here, here it is, right? So that's where we get the one inch. Let's uh let's see. Yep, yeah, there you go. That's our measurement. Okay. So when we want one inch of flat stock on our flange, that's when we select that. And, uh, oh, sorry for that. And these are basically all of the options that control the final dimensions of the flange. Again, really, really important if you forget to adjust that or if you select a wrong value, a wrong option, you will get a bad part. Very, very important. But you see that there are two more tabs here. So let's go to the second tab. Well, bend relief. Uh, the, this is the width and the depth of the relief. Uh, we did send that. Uh, we did set that um, in the sheet metal parameters at the start. But we can override it here. Um, you know, individually for this specific flange command. And we have an option that says corners. Now look at this. This is a bit weird, right? doesn't really look nice or symmetric or whatever but if I select the miter option look what happens this edge this gap this relief okay it becomes symmetric it is shared between the two adjacent flanges and I, I can even set the gap right so right now this is uh, Four thousandths of an inch, which is uh, a tenth of a millimeter, roughly. Um, I might want to make it a hundredth of an inch of my gap. Okay, so you see what the gap controls. I want to make. Let's say I want to make it a tenth of an inch. Okay, that went too far. Can we see some differences now? There you go. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's bring that back to point one. So there is no value. There you go. Okay. So that's what the miter command does. Um, especially when you're creating boxes with perpendicular flanges. This more often than not needs to be checked. Okay. Uh, let's finish talking about uh, the uh, Options you have here, you can have a bend only. Um, I think that if you have a bend only, this yeah, this becomes irrelevant, right? And you know this is uh, pretty much what it says. Um, this is just uh, just a bend, right? It creates only the bend and nothing else. Uh, that's something that you would use very often, but there you go. Um, uh, finally, we have this bend angle, hugely important. This is a value that you will be uh, using a lot. And let's let's do this. Let's unmiter these corners. Now let's go make this 120 degrees. Okay. Why didn't I un unmiter that? No. Okay, so these are mitered corners, right? We have a gap. There you go. Okay, now let's unmiter them and they interfere. Okay, now a Libre is going to allow you to do that. It is going to allow you to make a part that is clearly unmanufacturable, right? Because you might need this geometry to create features down the line that will make it manufacturable. But uh, this is not exactly a good practice, and uh, in cases like that, you do need to miter, and now that is something that you can manufacture, and we can even uh, keep going, adding flanges all around, and getting this part, okay? Um, let's bring that back to 90. Okay, and finally, bend radius. Well, the bend radius, the bend radius is set from the sheet metal parameters, but you can override it here, right? So basically, whenever you see these uh, variable names, A, D, global, whatever, these are just overrides, right? This is something that is already set, and 
you can uh, create an override. Okay, so let's go and make uh, another flange here. Okay, and I want to make this. Let's make that 60 degrees. Okay. And we didn't talk about these two values. Well, if we don't want the flange to extend all the way across the edge we selected to make it, we can create these offsets, right? So let's give that an offset of one uh, inch on this side. Okay. Look at this, right? This is important. Again, um, zero thickness cut here. Okay, we'll talk about that. Let's give it an offset of half an inch this side. Okay, so there you go. Now, of course, this is not manufacturable. Okay, zero thickness cuts are not manufacturable. Uh, manufacturable. They are magic. In fact, they cannot be created in the real world. Um, so why why does Alibre allow allow us to do it, or why doesn't it add? A relief there automatically. Well, because you see, if we select an adjacent alignment to our flange, there is no need for a relief there. Okay? So, in fact, it's not sure what to do with it. That's why it's not doing it. It says you might want to have it like that. I don't care. Okay? Um, so now, if I go into the advanced tab, because this is a single flange, there is no relief, but I can add a round one. Okay, and this is what it did. It created the relief with a round shape. I can even do a rectangular, and I can even override the width and the depth, right, of this relief. Let's override this and make it half the uh, leaf depth, you see what it did, again, okay. Now, if I want this to go to, towards the inside, I just click reverse bend, okay, and now it's going to the inside. However, there is an implied way to control that, which is, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, these tabs, these flanges all create sketches, and when you delete them, uh, the sketch gets left behind, unless you're uh, creating a flange from the full edge. So if I want to create a flange that goes towards the outside, right, I just click the outside edge, let's unreverse it, I just click the outside edge. Now. If I click the inside edge, it will go towards the inside. So there is this implied way to control uh, where your flange is going to point, basically. Okay. So we did this, and then now I want to create another flange here. Okay, that's fine. And I want to create another flange here, and I want to make that, I don't know, let's say 120 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so I have a 3D shape here. Okay. Is that manufacturable? Spoiler alert, it's not. So let's, let's do our little check that I was talking about earlier. Let's heat flat pattern. Well, when you hit flat pattern, it will unfold, but you can clearly see that there is uh, overlap here, okay? This is not creatable. You cannot cut this out of a 2D uh, sheet of stock, right? out of a flat sheet of stock in such a way so that you follow these bends and you get this 3D geometry, right? And the offending piece is this one. This is the one that if you unfold it, it will uh, interfere. So if I delete that part, I'm good to go. If I, right, you see that now, well, we still have a, we still have a uh, zero thickness cut. Yes, we do. And you can take a look at it here. So, 
Let's go in. Oh, we do have a relief. Well, what's going on there? Let's trim the side bends. Okay. We need to trim the side bends. Oh, still, still have it. Okay, let's... Uh, can we miter it? No, we cannot. Okay, so we need to give it a bit of offset. That's very interesting. Oh, we need to give it an offset that is equal to the stock. Okay, so we need to find our AD thickness. AD thickness, okay. That's, yep, that works. Now, this whole ordeal, I guess, went on screen with you, uh, shows that you need your utmost attention when creating sheet metal parts. And it also shows the nature of the sheet metal environment as a CAM environment, just as much as a CAD environment. Okay. So let's say now that we want to create a new part. Let's create a new sheet metal part. Okay. So we've seen the tab command. We've seen the flange command extensively. What is this? The contour command. Okay. So let's sketch on the um, YZ plane now. Okay. Let's do that. And I want to say that these three lines are equal and this is going to align the dimension two and a quarter inches and this is 120 degrees oh by the way give me a second here because i want to see the dimension i want to see my equations There you go. So now I can make this A1 and we're good to go. Oh, so I hit OK. Well, this is an open line. What can I do with it? And you can clearly see there are no bend radii here, sharp corners. Well, if I click on the contour uh, command, what it does is it interprets my sketch and creates a sheet metal part out of it. Okay, and you will see here that this is my sketch. Here's the sharp corner. It created a bent radius so that it's tangent to the line coming in and the line flying off of that corner. And it's done the same thing here. Okay, here interpretation was done on the inside um, and we have quite a fit quite a few more options here first of all we have the option to reverse the thickness so it's so so the thickness is over our sketch the sketch now follows this bottom side of the thickness instead of following the top side of the thickness as it did before this is the depth uh, we can even create a mid plane, right? And let's say that we want this to be two inches. Two inches is fine. Okay. And the rest of the things you can see here are overrides. Okay. So this is the band radius, K factor, whatnot. Uh, plus, I haven't hit OK yet, but you can see in the Design Explorer what's what. It has created a tab. And it has created two flanges out of that tab. So selecting which linear figure is the tab can be done automatically or you can select it manually. Now, um, so, uh, ah, okay, we need to show the sketches. Okay, so now what I've done is this center piece is the tab, okay? 
and these other two pieces are flanges and uh, it's it is what it is right it's really uh, doesn't really make a huge difference um okay and here is our part now so let's say that I go ahead and create some flanges. I want to show you an example here again of manufacturability vs what the 3D looks like. Okay, so this clearly interferes. However, if I flat pattern it, this is something that can be cut. It's just that, um, oh, sorry, double clicked with the mouse. This can be cut from a stock right from a sheet stock but when you go and create something like that it's going to interfere uh, now what could you do in this case well you could take this flange and edit it oh we can oh, okay so you need to edit the top flange you need to unselect this edge by the way if you Untoggle the 3D preview, you can unselect edges, even if you don't remember which one it was in this menu here, in this list here. And this also works in fillet and chamfers. And it's very, very useful there. Okay, so I unselected that. I'm going to go in and make a single flange here. But now, the global bend radius, right? I want to make it twice Sorry, twice the AD thickness. Okay. What did it do now? Well, now it flies off. Oh, okay. We sh we're still getting some. Uh, we're still getting some uh, interference here. Maybe if we gave it a larger relief. Or a larger, you know, let's give it more bend radius it's, this is the correct way to do it I need it yeah I need to do it up here there you go okay, now I can overlap these two flanges but you see I had to go in and tell it exactly what to do. Again, this is, as, mu as much as it is a, a CAD system, it's also a CAM system, okay? So we have this option to do it like this, if we so desire it. Well, unflatten, uh, it will flat pattern, of course. Um, you can see the different cut you need to take up here. And uh, that's that. Okay, let's delete this. Let's go back and add this flange back. There you go. So this is unmanufacturable, but then we can go, come in here, miter everything. Look at this. No interferences, right? But now the flat pattern interferes. Okay, this flange interferes with this flange. Again, you need to be very, very careful right it takes a lot of experience to design sheet metal parts but if you don't have that experience keep pushing that flat pattern button okay make sure that uh, you get the software to tell you if something can potentially go wrong okay by the way this might actually be a very nice example for the tab how can you add a second tab okay so let's add this flange um let's hit okay you will notice i didn't even bother uh, with the length or whatever okay so let, look at this let us sketch on this face
Okay, so I got this sketch now. And what if I tab it? Let's click OK. So now I created a cover for, for, for this entire side, right? Let's uh, pattern it. It still interferes. It still does. Oh, man. So again, that's not a good way to do it either. But you saw that the tab can be incorporated at a later time if you want to do something like that. OK, so we're here. Um, I want to show you something else. Um, we can create a sketch and drive a bend from that sketch. However, we need to do it in a very uh, specific way. Okay, so the way you do it is you click sketch bend. Okay, you you can see that you have the same alignment um, options as you did before. Plus now you have another one called center. When I'm creating sketch bends, I usually go for that one. Uh, bend angle, well, bend angle. Let's say sixty degrees this time. And we have our overrides as usual. Okay. Okay. So we, you see the tooltip, it says select sketch plane. I select my sketch plane. Now I want to make a line that extends past the flange I want to bend. Okay. And there you go. It bended it. Now, if I want this to have very specific dimensions, um, the way I do it, or a very specific location, the way I do it is you need to go in and uh, define the sketch after the fact. Okay, so I will just add a couple of points here. See that these points are coincident to these edges. Let's say that distance here is 3 eighths. And the distance here is an inch. Okay. And if I want this to be fully defined, because that is good practice, I need to define how much it flies out. And now I have a fully defined sketch. Okay. And I still have my bend here. So I created a bend that um, is uh, driven by a line. Now, now this closed corner um, is more, makes more sense if we show it back in the um, rectangular part. So let's, let's come back here. Let's delete this flange because I can't stand watching it. <laughs> it's a very weird thing to do. So closed corner, right? So let's select an edge. Let's select this edge. Okay. And you see that you have, first of all, it sees if it has a uh, flange next to it and it just makes it so that they touch. It closes the corner. And you can either uh, join it this way, join it symmetrically, or join it that way. And that's all it does. However, um, this this creates uh, this this makes a lot of difference in the final part, and maybe you need to uh, join it like that because look, this is called a butt. Okay, <laughs> you might want to butt weld this, uh, or you might want to weld it from the inside, or you know whatever. So this closes the corner. Really, really important, especially for post processing the sheet metal part, okay? Um, and maybe we should select all the edges. Ah, we need to, we need to repeat it, okay? You see, I just selected the outside edge and it still did the same thing. So there is some manufacturing intelligence going on there. So there's our box here. What real use it has, I do not know, but hey, 
So let's go back here. Um, now, another thing I wanted to show you is this dimple, right? So this is a feature that you would make by stamping on the sheet metal. And uh, this uh, might be done before or after bending it, but uh, uh, it creates a, a depressed feature, right? Um, and the way this, oh, I, I need to create the sketch in advance. So let's create the sketch here. And let's just, uh, yeah, let's, let's just make a rectangle. I'm not even going to place it. Okay, so I have a sketch here. Let's create our dimple. Okay, and um, so this is what it does. Um, this is the depth. It's twice the thickness. Again, it can be overridden. Uh, you can add a draft angle. These things usually have draft angles because uh, the die used to make them has a draft angle so that it is easier to pull out. So let's see that it, we have a two degree draft angle. Okay, ah, that's so small, it's almost imperceptible. But you do need a draft angle in real life with these things, right? And uh, yeah, include rounding. Round the die radius. If I include the rounding, you can see what it does. I'm not really sure how you would make this, right? But whatever. And this is another interesting one. Round off the profile corners. Now, again, this, this is a shape you can't really manufacture. But now, yeah, this is something that you could punch with a die. Okay? So many options here. Most of them are uh, overrides, sketch alignment inside or outside. Again, this makes complete sense. So this is the inside and this is the outside. Uh, sorry, the other way around. There you go. Sheet metal is hard, man, I'm telling you. Now, if you flat pattern that, you will see that this doesn't, uh, you know, evolve in any way. But yeah, that's what you need to do. That's, that's the valid flat pattern for this um, feature. Okay. Now, let me show you something up here. So you see that this is this flat pattern is just a rectangle, right? Let's show you something else. Let's go and sketch. Well, I'm going to sketch it on this surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this uh, in as a reference, and I want to create a cut. So let's create a cut um, through all. Okay, cut it up here, you see that. Okay. Now let's flat pattern that. And here's our cut. Okay, so anything you do will propagate into the flat pattern. So we, we've talked about all of the tools that uh, are used to create sheet metal parts. Um, these corner round and corner chamfer, well, basically they work exactly the same way as they do in the um, uh, modeling environment, right? So if we give this chamfer, you will see that it's actually even the same, right? The same form. Okay, and there you go. Um, I'm not really sure what these are separate tools. Uh, maybe it is because they have some effect on uh, reliefs. So if you can, just use the sheet metal tools instead of the uh, modeling ones. But now, finally, I want to show you something else. So let's open a part here, right? Um, Let's open this part. 
Okay, and this is not a sheet metal part. It's a standard part. Okay, it's uh, a loft created out of two hexagons. How can you use this to create a sheet metal part? Well, there are two ways. You either uh, click here and say convert to sheet metal, or you can do this. You can start a new part, a new sheet metal part. Okay, this is an empty part. We can go ahead and play with our sheet parameters if we want to. Hit convert to sheet metal, and now I have this select new file to convert. So now I can go in, find this part, right, and bring it in. Okay, so just as with the uh, contour tab, it needs a, uh, sorry, the contour flange. Uh, it needs a tab and then the rest are flanges. Same thing here. We need to select the face. That is going to be our um, tab. Okay. I'm going to select this one. And then you just click in here and you select edges that are going to be bends. And you see that it picked up this entire face. I'm going to select sequentially go around this part. And as I selected the last one, Right? You will see that it's, it creates a rip. Right? So it's telling me that this part is going to be ripped. It will be open along this edge because if it's not open, it cannot unfold. Right? That makes complete sense. Let's hit OK. OK, so we got that part. And now if we click Flat Pattern, this is what it unfolds to. OK, this makes complete sense. If you bend along these lines, you will have this part. Now I want to show you what these tools do. Okay, so let's let's see. This was the tab. So let's click on bend. It asks us for a fixed uh, face. So I want to select that. And bend, I want to unbend everything. So what did I end up with? Well, I went back to the flat pattern, but now this is a Design Explorer feature, and I can do things here and then rebend, right? And uh, have that propagate uh, along the part. And I will show you what I mean by inserting a catalog feature, let's say on this plane, a curved slot. Okay, Hit apply, close. Now let us uh, fully define this, and I will bring you back when I'm done because it will take a while. Yeah, let's say that this is the sketch we want uh, to achieve. Let's do a cut. Yes, that's fine. And now I'm going to click on rebend, select all the bends we unbent, okay, and hit OK. And look what happened. Okay, we have propagated this curve around this part in a very elaborate manner, if I may say so as well. Okay, so these are all things that you can do um, uh, to create sheet metal parts. And, uh, well, let's see if we can. And, you know, this is a normal sheet metal part. You can go ahead and uh, uh, be adding flanges to it after the fact, okay? Uh, 13 maybe? Okay. There you go. Unfold our flat pattern and these flanges have been added to it correctly. So um, that's it for sheet metal parts. Um, I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to ask them uh, down in the comment section. And uh, 
Um, I'd love to know what uh, sheet metal parts you've made with uh, the tips and tricks um, um, I showed you on this video. Uh, if you liked it, hit subscribe for m more videos like this. Um, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button because I still need to know. Uh, and um, I hope I see you in the next one.